This book is Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. I read this yesterday all in one day and it's quite a big book so that's not very clever of me. It's supposed to be working. So usually in these book videos I ramble on about something and don't really have a structure so now I'm giving it a structure, new format. So this is what's going to happen from now on. I'm going to talk about the premise and the plot of the book, a little review of what I thought of it um, and then we're going to pick two or three major themes or things that I've been thinking about throughout the book and just like pose some questions about it and try and you know discuss. So for this book I'm going to be taking on the topics of reality and nostalgia. So in this book as with most books I've been reading recently the world has sort of gone to shit and the way that people are getting through this is that they're spending most of their time in a virtual reality called Oasis, which is an acronym for something long and complicated. It's gone so far that people spend their whole day on Oasis, they go to school there, they only have friends there and don't really interact with people in the real world. So the book starts with the creator of this whole system dying and bequeathing his stake in the company, which is like hundreds of billions of dollars, to the winner of a treasure hunt style competition that he's set up. James Halliday, the guy that died and set up this whole contest, was really obsessed with the 80s and everything pop culture to do with the 80s. And in this virtual reality world, he had clues about the contest. It's been five years since the contest began and nobody's really gotten anywhere, but there's this huge subsection of society called Gunters, who are egg hunters looking for Halliday's Easter egg, and have just completely immersed themselves in 80s pop culture and everything that Halliday loved to try and get into his mindset and try and find how to, you know, get win. <laughs> we follow a character named Wade whose avatar in Oasis is passable as he tries to complete the quest. What do you get if you put together a good character, an interesting science fiction concept and a quest? An awesome book. Yeah it was a joy to read, I couldn't put it down literally and really liked it. My main sore point of this is that it's just for geeks, like really. I think the majority of all the obscure references are completely lost on most people. It's only people that are obsessive about the 80s the same way as these characters are that would understand everything in this book. I know that's all the point but it gets a bit pushy when they drag you through the gameplay of the 50 billionth game and yeah. Like I know some things about the 80s but I wasn't born in it and therefore I just don't have much interest to know about every single game ever created in the decade. But overall, really enjoyable book. Great plot, characters, concept, just good. People play Oasis by wearing visors and haptic gloves or big rig setups um, to just be really immersive in this environment. And it's overtaken lots of people's realities because they spend more time in the game than they do outside of it in this world that's falling apart. But is the consumption of immersive reality a bad thing? Here's a quote from the creator of Oasis, James Halliday. That was when I realised, as terrifying and painful as reality can be, it's also the only place where you can find true happiness, because reality is real. What makes our reality any more real than an electronic one? One point that's made in this book is that you can't have human interactions in Oasis, and that's sort of like the height of reality. And also they have this problem of having neglected the world that they feel like they need to fix. Um, but I would argue against Halliday's statement. I'm coming to you through a camera and through bytes and over an internet connection to a screen and you can still visualise me as a human. I spent a lot of time on the internet, we all do, and we don't realise how that is a different reality. We know it is being constructed but we still spend a lot of time with our mind in that place. A reality without physical human interaction isn't a good thing but if it's so much more immersive and creative and you can connect with more people, why is that any less valid than real life? I think we cling on to reality in the sense that we've always known because we've always known it and don't want to think about how there could be more than that. I've thought of a relevant video so I'm going to put that in the description as well. And that brings me on to the point of nostalgia. This whole thing is 80s centric, everything about it is 80s. It puts a lot of weight on pop culture. But really, why do we find pop culture interesting at all? Why is nostalgia so kitsch? I think the reason why I want to know anything about the world that's going on is because other people do and you can connect to people that way. And in this world, since everybody we come into contact with is obsessed with 80s, they have that in common and can talk about it. There's also that knowing everything about a subset of the world makes you feel really accomplished. But why is it that knowing everything that happened in the 80s is so much more in vogue than knowing everything that happened in the 20s, say. The problem I see in this book is like a downward spiral of consumption. They're recycling 
all of these elements that happened 60 years ago without bringing in anything new. The perpetual repetition of decades isn't helpful. We see revivals all the time in like fashion especially, um, but they're always evolving with what they've learnt since and the surroundings, and that doesn't happen in this book at all. You can see that Generation Zero had their most formative period in the 80s and made their children have that and continued it throughout their lives without evolving. I think for culture to be healthy, it needs to evolve with its surroundings. All these new technologies they have should lead to different, more original works of fiction. And sure, include elements of the past, but with a different context of thinking forward. I saw a great documentary about this once called Everything is a Remix, which I'll link in the description as well. That's about like intellectual property and social evolution and stuff like that. Good book, it made me think, and it was entertaining, so I'm giving this a high rating. Bye.